Good evening, and once again, we are here to learn. Once again, I'm here to share with you things that I know, things that I've studied and learned, and things that you might like to know that I know. So let's get started. I really don't have a title yet for this, except for you to know that we are doing the study of etymology and also some sciences, both fiction and nonfiction. And we'll also be studying some from the Bible. We'll make references to the Bible as well. And we'll try to bring it all together and show you one whole picture that you may not have ever heard because information is hard to get. We must search and research in order to get information and knowledge. And once we have it, we have it. So let's get started. If you were watching last week or the week before, you know, we gave an account of some of John Milton's book, Paradise Lost. And in that account, we talked about things that happened in the beginning of this earth dispensation uh, before mankind was created. Tonight, we're going to talk a little bit about what went on even before that, when man was not created yet, but Satan, God, Satan, God and Lucifer and all the angels and the heavenly hosts and other aspects of angelic beings and other beings throughout the galaxies existed. We're going to talk a little bit. We won't go that far out into nonfiction. We'll just make reference to things that you call nonfiction, which you think uh, may say are not true. And you have that right. You do not have to believe nonfiction. Nonfiction simply means it does not exist in this time. So if you don't want to accept it, you have set a standard for yourself not to believe nonfiction or not. Uh, fiction and non-fiction or not to believe fiction then what I say is hear me out because just maybe you can use some of this in the future you never know well let's start by saying um, release yourself you know take a little just shake it off all the things that may have caused you to be tired or weary during the day, or that may have caused you to feel the term that Christian use is burden. That's, I don't like that word either, but they use it, so we'll say things that get you down in the dumps. How about that? We don't want that either. We want to shake it all off, just relax, and try to open the portals of your mind to learn, to hear, to see, to perceive those things that I'm going to present to you. I will tell you a little bit about John Milton, and then maybe I shouldn't just yet. I should let you research. That's what I'll do. Look it up for yourself and find out who this man is. Who is he? Always do that. When someone brings you information, look up the source of who they're talking about so that you may be able to relate to them as they share information with you. Learning is so much fun. Not only is it fun, it's rewarding because you can use that knowledge that you get. Well, anyway, John Mil Milton records in his book that Lucifer, and I won't start at the beginning, 
But we're going much further back than we did the last time in history. But he records that Lucifer was a great angel. You see, before he became a musician and all that other stuff that he is and all the stuff that he was, he was an angel just like the rest of the angels. And his position and assignment working for God was to tie up the enemy out there when they were fighting battles. And when they would capture the enemies, his job was to tie them up. And his job also was to loose, to untie God's angels that had been captured and set them free. And so he was called Loose Sifer. He would loose the angels of God from capture and his uh, other responsibility was to see fur or to reproduce or repair the angel's wings. So that's what that means. And his name was called Lucifer. God is very simple in the names he gave uh, throughout the centuries. Uh, it made sense. For he named according to the positions that people held, that, that the angels and people throughout the ages held, H-E-L-D, that they had. So, we want to thank God. We're going to talk a little bit about the structure of the kingdom of God tonight, how it's arranged and set up. You say you don't believe it? Well, we won't refer to him so much as God all the time. We'll call him that great geometrical, odometrical, directional force. I know the young people can relate to that, the force. So that's what we'll, we'll refer to him at from time to time, as from time to time. But anyway, let me just look at my notes. Um, you know, I, I do need to refer to them sometimes. I think I've told you all I need to tell you about that. But what I do want you to know is that um, the order and structure of the kingdom in which God, Satan, the angels, or both of them lives in even to this day. There are some things you need to understand in order to appreciate life on earth and life in the universe. And not be, it will help you appreciate others more. It will help you understand that we are not, uh, no one has all the right perceptions and aspects of how and who and what others are. For they are all important. God says yes to everybody. The God that we believe in does for he wants all in the kingdom of the universe and the earth to be what we call saved, S-A-V-E-D. And that means complete, whole, happy, loving, kind, and living a prosperous life. And prosperous does not just mean money, but it means having all your needs, your health, your strength, your ability to think, to talk and speak, to walk, to use your hands, and to do all the things that we were created to do. I bet you believe you were created even though you were born. You started somewhere. 
just like your mom and dad did. So let's all try to listen and learn now. And that then help me by being patient if I take a break and need to make sure that I formulate things so that I transfer the information to you where you may uh, be able to formulate it in your mind to understand it the way you can. Before Earth was formed this time, because we know there are other times there were glaciers and ice glaciers and the earth was destroyed. Then there was the uh, dinosaurs and the earth was destroyed. And this time, we are in this dispensation. That's what this means. That's what that means. We're within a new dispensation on earth. And we don't want to get carried away thinking we're about to be destroyed. The scriptures that I read tell me that God says the geometric abdominal directional force says that my people, us, perish because of lack of knowledge. That's what destroys a people, not having appropriate knowledge and enough of it to understand how to develop good things, not ill will, but good things around them and their surroundings and to produce and reproduce on the earth. So we're going to talk about now how this system works. I talk about spirits, and I know you talk about spirits, and spirits are not spooky, scary things. That's what you are. You are a spirit inside of a, inside of a body, just like I am. What is it that makes you talk? What is it that you know? We know you have a motor system, all that in your brain. But there's something else, your breath, that keeps you alive, that helps you breathe. Well, that is your spirit man, your inward man. We can feed it by the things we see. The eyes are the windows of your soul man, your spirit man, your heart, and the things that mean something to you. We are a spirit being too, but we are visible spirits in this earth. Some of the spirits that we talk about are not visible to you. But they exist. And have you ever heard, saw something just fall all of a sudden? You don't know why it fell? Well, maybe a spirit bumped it. You see? Or maybe it was telekinesis you thought about it. Well, you decide what you believe. But I want to say um, the spirit of Lucifer, we know, became known as Satan when he entered the earth. I'm skipping a whole section. We know that Lucifer, you have to watch the other video to understand some of this. Lucifer was once a musician. He was chief musician for God and all. But he and God had a big falling out because Lucifer wanted to keep advancing and taking over. Then he decided he wanted to be in God's place, to be God himself. And that's when they decided, God decided to tell Lucifer no. See, sometimes you got you to gotta say no. Because people will go too far with what they're asking of you or doing. So you have to say no. And God does say no. Don't think he doesn't say no. Because he does. And you hear people say, well, I ask God. Ask God he'll give you anything you want. No. That's not true. God will give you. He has certain rules and regulations for giving God has principles and concepts. 
we could ask for things, and you could ask in Jesus, you could ask him like that, uh, in Jesus' name, and he will do it. But you could also ask for things that are out of the realm of what God expects you to do, to have those things. To whom much is given, much is required. There is something that we must do in order to cause God to move and do things for us. There are ifs in those words and scriptures. If you, if you read closely, the scripture says, If my people, it says if now, so that's a, that's a condition. If my people who are called by my name, his name, you didn't say everybody, <laughs> will turn from their wicked ways and seek my face. And pray. Then... I will. See? God has to will it for you. But he has those conditions before he does it. Then I will heal their land. So there are conditions that we must follow in a lot of cases. And then in some cases, it's simply our own faith and belief. But if we don't have our will hooked up to the will of the great uh, geometrical, abdominal, directional force, which is the Spirit of God, then we cannot have what we say. For we must be in the right perspective and the right attitude to get those things. Because one, you got to go through a whole lot of spiritual, spiritual levels to get God to even move or act or to hear you. So this is what now I'm going to tell you. The order of things. I'm going to start at this point. In the book of Isaiah, there's an account of the position of God Jesus and Satan, who is also used to be named Lucifer, they held positions in the Galactica. The scripture doesn't call it specifically that word Galactica, but that's what it is among the stars and the moon and the sky. And so God's position was above things. If I did a diagram, it would be to the left. And then, Jesus' position was in the middle. And to the right of Jesus was Satan. And they shared these positions together. I want to say, uh, you know, I, I've never shared this um, publicly. I've shared it in private settings because I don't want you to be afraid, I don't want you to be skeptical, but if you are, I understand. I don't want you to be um, offended. I hope that you're not. But my concept is this, from my readings and understanding of these scriptures, is that God created all creatures and beings, all of them, 
in the outer space. That force created them all. Now, whether we understand it as the Big Bang Theory and then nature and trees and, and, and creatures and angelic hosts, or whether we understand it as Darwin's theory, which I, which I say is simply him trying to explain creation in a different form. And it was showing mankind's development frame by frame, just like in a picture camera. He could not explain it the way I do, and I certainly could not explain it the way he did, but I have my understanding and visualize how God did this. And the way I explain it, if you don't understand it, or if you don't like it, you don't have to accept it. But um, I like it, thank you, thank God, and I want you to be comfortable. But God was there in that position to the left. And then Jesus in the middle and Satan to the right of Jesus. If God created all things, this force, the Big Bang, or whatever, if he created all things from the beginning, then he certainly created Jesus and Satan. And most people know that. They believe and accept, but they say, why did he create Satan? <laughs> well, let's go back. Jesus, which I'm going to have to skip forward a little, is God's begotten son, which means he was born of God and a woman through the seed of the woman and God was the one that fed that seed life through the force of the Holy Ghost, his spirit. Satan, who was Lucifer, was God's created son. So they both belong to God. One son was begotten the other one was created. So I hope I'm making sense to you and you understand uh, the abilities and things of God. You want to know how God, well, you have to read the story. Look at the video. The other video, God, Myrtle Jones, EFAC, uh, God, Mankind, human, the Human Anatomy, and Christ. And you will understand a little better. It takes time to learn. So don't, don't, don't worry, it'll be there for you and don't expect to get it all so fast. Be encouraged that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Um, but So in my mind, they're brothers. Just like you might have a half brother or a half sister, or two different fathers. Well, God was both their father and God was both their mother, except that Mary was the mother of Jesus, but for Satan, God is both. Now let's go forward. After, after Lucifer fell, fell out with his daddy, we'll put it like that, <laughs> He won his daddy's chair. He wanted to sit there and rule, and God said no to him. So they got in a big, uh, like I call it, he, Satan got up stewed. Lucifer and God and daddy kicked him out. You, know, you ever been kicked out of the house? <laughs> Your daddy said, get out, and don't come back. Get out there and learn. Go out there and produce. Get a job. Do something. Well, that's what God was basically telling Satan. Learn. You're not ready for this. So he uh, kicked Satan. I'm trying to help you not be afraid. Like you've been taught, you see, to 
to think horrible things <laughs> about the story. But anyway, Satan was kicked onto the earth. And when he was, um, God told him now, he became, they had, see, they were, had abilities that we were, we don't see every day. They had abilities to transform their bodies to different things. They had, if you believe in mystical, mystical things and creatures that you see on TV, you can certainly understand what I'm trying to explain to you. So Satan went on his belly. <laughs> and uh, sounds cool, but daddies are daddies. And uh, he got, his father God told him to have the earth, you know, it's all yours. And uh, do something with it. <laughs> and uh, later, God said, I want to make me a man. I want to make me a man. I I'm lonely. I miss my son. And uh, I want a man who will be after my image, who will do what I want and what I would have done if I were there. So he... Uh, had a mist cover the ground, which I call chemicals, and uh, on the earth, and he took dust and chemicals from the earth and made a man, and he blew into his nostrils the breath of life, his own life. He gave this creature his life. He didn't just speak it into existence like he had done times before, but he put a part of himself with us, with human beings, with creatures that come from the earth. So, he put the man on earth and told him to tend to the animals and the trees and the garden. He let him name, he let Adam name everything and uh, every creature, every tree, every flower, every plant, every bird, every fish. So Adam was there working, and then God said he could find no suitable mate for Adam among the creatures, and Adam was lonely. So he put Adam to sleep, he gave him an unconscious state, and man was unconscious. And he took a rib from the man, Adam, and I'm skipping in time. You're going to have to study and research how this could be. I'm not going to tell you every little detail because I don't have that, you know, the time to do it. But um, he said, I'll make him a woman, a helpmate. So he took the rib and he went to another part of where they were, and he created a woman with that rib. He, that rib became a woman. And that word means womb, comes from the word womb, W-O-M-B, man. So a woman is a womb man, made from a man, but she has the ability to give birth. So she, in, in, in a lot of ways that I won't explain here, watch the other video, it'll tell you a little more. She's a man too, but she can give birth. So if you're the kind of person that thinks you gotta cut your body up and do things to become something else, you know, I'm not trying to offend you, I just feel so sorry that people have gone not liking themselves. For well, God made you perfect. You are without spot or blemish. There's nothing wrong with you. 
There's nothing wrong with a man. There's nothing wrong with a woman. You're both perfect beings. Perfectly perfect in the eyes of God. Able and capable of carrying out the mission he created you for. And that was to reproduce the human species and to carry on on the earth. And he said to subdue it. Take dominion over it. We know that Satan is the god of this world because Adam gave him that right. We won't talk about that. But Adam gave Satan the right to take back what God had given him in the Garden of Eden. But be assured there's nothing wrong with you. You don't have to change your body parts. You don't have to hurt yourself. You don't have to do anything. Just love yourself because you're a wonderful person. You're a wonderful being. You're fully and capable of being all that God created you to be. Back to the story. Yes. But back to the story. Satan. Yes, Lord. Mm. I love you all. <laughs> I really do. Um, Satan knew that he was the God of this world. He took control. And before Adam and Eve were made for each other, um, there was a point where God and, and Satan had another argument or fight. You know, after he kicked them out onto the earth and before he created Adam and Eve, it seems like his son just wasn't going to, Satan was, just wasn't going to do what he wanted him to do and that they weren't going to get along and he was going to be broken hearted. And, so he made a man called Adam. But Satan, in that time period, before Adam and Eve were made, organized his angels that had been thrown out of heaven with him. He organized his angels and God has stripped Satan, his son, of his powers. His powers to create and do as he did. And to be able to use those powers the way God does. So Satan organized his angels and, and his spirit that was taken from him, part of it, was his intellect, his, in, his ability to, to think and to create, like I said. So what was left of that ability he gave to other spirits that came from him and called them the, the, the devil, which means to develop ill will. And he had those spirits do his thinking for him. And so they, and you, this is something you'll have to think about, study telekinesis and tel telepathy. But what Satan does, what he does with the devil is he emit his thoughts to him and the devil comes up with the schemes. That's what the spirit, those two spirits do. Now in modern times, those spirits are used human beings too. Uh, but I won't get into that. That's a whole nother story, a whole nother lesson. But what happened was 
the angels of Satan speak for him too. And they speak to the devil to give orders. And then they carry out those orders after the devil tempts, tricks, <laughs> or um, suggests things to us. Now that sounds like you want to turn off, turn the switch off, and say I'm not watching no more of this. <laughs> but I'm trying to give you, I'm I'm calling it what it is, trying to give you an idea of how it works. We'll move on. It'll sound a lot funnier in a few minutes. How the devil works, because it's nothing to be afraid of. But that's how that's organized, and then in the spirit realm. Now let's understand we're talking about spirits. But then there uh, was Adam and Eve, and they were human. They became the father and mother of the earth. And God told them to go and subdue the earth and to replenish it and to have children. Back to the point. <coughs> they, had ch they had their first two children, Cain and Abel, we know the story. Everybody knows that story. It's written in many books outside of the Bible about Cain and Abel. Um, so that that's understood. They continue to reproduce. And then... God said, I'm going to have to do something because they're not getting it right. There was the flood and God destroyed the earth because all the people that had been born resisted him and didn't want any parts of God. They would not hear from him. Well, the truth is, they couldn't. They had been blinded, <laughs> and they had been in a position where they couldn't hear or understand. They went on living their lives like zombies, I guess. <laughs> That's what I call it. But God, in the meantime, had made a, a, um, an agreement with Satan. And this is something most people don't know. But he made an agreement. He renewed, he loved his son. He made an agreement. He said, okay, I tell you what, all of mine that follow and obey me, I will keep and take charge of. All of those that follow you and disobey me and my word are yours. And Satan liked that. And he said, well, I will destroy them. You see why? Because he wants to please his father too. This thing has got to be worked out. They want to please each other. They want to be one big happy family with Jesus. And I'm going to get to that. Who are we? What is it us, to us? Well, we're part of that created entity. We come from that dispensation, too. And our job was to take dominion, to rep replenish, reproduce, so that God would have someone and all other uh, people that he could love and cherish and, and take care of 
and be pleased with. For these are the type of things that creative spirits desire. But anyway, um, so what are we? We think we're caught in the middle of God and the devil. No, we're not. We have to make choices. And what is that choice for you? Well, we know that God had made the decision to come to earth in the form of, uh, in the flesh, in the form of uh, Jesus Christ, who was also his son in heaven already, spiritually. But he said, I'm going to take that spirit of mine and I'm going to take it to earth, put it in a woman's womb who had, who is a virgin, have her conceive and bear me. That's powerful. He made sure he was born of God himself the, by the power of the Holy Ghost. And he did that. We know the story about how he lived, how he died, how he rose again from the dead. But the, but the outcome of all of that is for reconciliation. Not just for Jesus, Satan, and God, but for all of us too. Because we had alienated ourselves from God. When, when, when Eve ate of the fruit and gave some to her husband, that was a poison apple. That's, I'm going to leave it like that. It gave them, them a chemical imbalance. You know, certain poisons that go in your system don't come out. And so this was passed down generation to generation. And God said, I'm going to help them. They have become intellectually disabled, my people. I need to cure them intellectually. And that is where we come in. We have a responsibility to educate ourselves. I believe in education. And that is why I'm sharing with you. So that we can make this kingdom work. So that we can make that God's kingdom work. So that we can all come into the fullness of the belief of love. Love is the key. For God is love. Thank you, Lord. But we must first know how to love. Love lives within us. And if you don't, know how to love, take the first step. Be kind. Be considerate. Be patient. Have temperance. Be just and fair in all things. And do whatever good you can. But you cannot enter into this kingdom and be successful without knowing Jesus Christ. That's the other part of this system. It's set up so that you have to know Jesus. Now, you don't have to live his life. You don't have to go through all the things he went through like people tell you. And all that. You don't have to do that. Satan only does that to people who are <laughs> trying to trick God. Or trick themselves to trick God. And it's impossible because he's working for God. And the people don't know it. God is his father too. <laughs> so, you know. But knowing Jesus. Jesus is the way to get to the father. Satan is trying to keep you from going there if you don't go to Jesus. He's not going to tell you that. He's crafty. 
He's a smart man, a smart being. And he's trying to work things out with God. And God's will and word says, I would that all men and creatures come into the fullness of who I am. And he meant that for his sons. And we are his sons too. For his breath lives in us. He wished that all of us would come to know him. But we are not allowed to go to him with evil intent, evil heart, evil thoughts, evil minds, hatred. None of that. But God will not accept us if our temple is not clean that means we gotta get right with God you ever heard this song get right with God and do it now get right with God he will show you how down at the cross Jesus bled and died Get right with God. Get right, get right with God. Well, the way to do that is to simply acknowledge who Jesus is, confess it with your mouth, believe it in your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he died, that he rose again for you, and that he is the Son of God, and that he has gone back to heaven, to the heavenly Galactica, to be with the Father God. And it is up to us now to work it out in the kingdom here on earth with Satan. So what do you do? They both, it, it's, it's funny, but you have to choose and how do you choose? Oh, that's another lesson. It has to do with the will and ability to choose and to know how and what to choose. But you can choose to be on God's side, which is, means you will be on Jesus' side, you see, because Jesus is the one that stands at the door. Remember his position was in the middle? You can get through Satan, but you got to get through Jesus. How do you get through Satan? By refusing him <laughs> and saying, no, I want to see Jesus. It's just like a big family. You go to the door, you knock, say, I want to see your brother. And he said, no. And he said, look, man, I want to see your brother now. I need to see him. You talk to him, right? He's going to let you go. And when you see Jesus, Jesus is going to say, well, what do I have to do with you? Who are you? <laughs> he said, we have to have some common ground. And Jesus said, do you believe in me? Why have you come to see my father? What do you want? Do you want to be made whole? Do you want to be full of your best self, your conscious state? with him to know God and his mind to know my father well you have to accept me too that's all Jesus is saying he wants you to accept him it's a family thing who well, say I'm tired of going back and forth <laughs> from earth to heaven to heaven to the, the great stars and the great space Asking, asking God, look, can I mess with her? Cause she don't know you, and she ain't trying to do right. Or and he'll, God will say, no, don't put your hands on him. Let him know my son. And uh, Satan said, no, I won't mess with him. He'll tell the devil, go whisper in her ear and tell her this. And if you take the choice to do wrong or to do some harm to another person, or evil thoughts and wishes, which the other angels create what you say in, in, in out here in the spirit realm. 
and something happens, you see? So we can't do that. You have to know your place in the spirit realm. When you have the right and authority to do, you don't if you don't know Jesus. So, <laughs> it's funny. But it's not hard. It's all about respect. Everybody understands that. You respect authority. You respect position. You respect organizational structure. Because you have to get through it. And if you don't respect the structure and do what you're supposed to do without doing harm, without doing wrong, without being offensive to others, then you can get to Jesus and the Father. But Jesus said, now, I got a trick on my brother. If you don't understand that, pick up the word. The Bible. <laughs> He's whispering gently to you. Read of me and learn of me. And I am there too. For I am in the scriptures. And they are real and live. They become live for you. And I will enter into you if you ask me to. And I will live with you. And I will be your sufficient, justified redeemer. I will bring you back to the place where God intended for you to be in the beginning. And you don't have to leave this earth. I know people tell you well about heaven. <laughs> and uh, that's true too, if you want to go. But there are many chambers to heaven. And you must know this. You don't have to live the same place I live in heaven. You don't have to live where somebody else lives with the gold streets and the gold slippers. I don't go for that one because I, I'm, I'm simple and I don't want my feet hurting from walking around in slippers all day. <laughs> That's funny. And then you, you don't have to eat fish and, fish and uh, honey and and, and milk all day. You know, uh, that's what they say is served in heaven. And so that's unappealing to a lot of people. It's certainly the wrong menu for me because I choose a different chamber of heaven. There is a chamber of heaven on earth. I'm sure you've heard of heaven on earth. Heaven will be on earth. That's true too. And this is where Christ will reign for Satan is going to give it up. But it's not time. <laughs> not yet. Until you believe and know and accept the, his position. He is not trying to establish a kingdom. Satan is not doing that. And you worry. You say, well, the tribulation is coming. Now, I'm taking a chance sharing this with you. But uh, you say uh, it's going to be bad. <laughs> well, God is here where we are. God is with us. He is where you are. And if you're worried about a tribulation, the point I was going to make is that Satan is only doing what he agreed to do with the Father God. And that is to be, you know how y'all go out and protest and go on saying this is a pro-test and want all of us to, to pass your test that you're giving while you're marching before you will cooperate? Well, that's what Satan is doing. He's giving you a test. He's giving you a test. Not Jesus. Not God. But this is something Satan is doing. And we know it through the scriptures. So, pass the test. 
get to know the Son, Jesus Christ. For the middle man is the one who always gets back to the leader first. Think about it. And he can show you the way to the leader. You first got to get to the other man. <laughs> and how you get to insist. You don't have to go to them. So no, there is another way to get to know Jesus through the scriptures. And say, I'm going to get to know Jesus. I want to know this guy. I want to know why he's so important. I want to know why God is so important. What, I mean, what's the big deal with this God guy? Well, this God guy is the one who's going to protect you. Because his son means business. The devil, Satan, Lucifer, all of his heavenly hosts, which is his angels and company, mean business. They mean they're going to do their job. And they're not going to play. So, God has said it will only affect one third of the earth. Pray that you don't force Satan to do those things. I'm not trying to frighten you. I'm not trying to give you propaganda. I'm trying to share with you things that you've studied to help you not be afraid and to know that all you have to do is turn from your wicked ways Wickedness starts in the heart. Turn from your wicked ways. Give your life to Christ. If you don't want to do that, at least be good. Be a good person. Be a decent person. For Jesus said, if you can't believe in me himself, at least believe on my Father God who sent me. You don't have to believe in Jesus. He don't insist at all. He really doesn't. That's scripture. That's in the scriptures. That's what we believe as Christians. You do not have to believe in Jesus Christ. But you do need him to get to the Father. <laughs> so, be a good cheer for God is with you. He loves you. He's not going to leave you or forsake you. Unless you push him out and say you don't want him, and that will hurt. That will hurt you. That will hurt God the Father. For he does love and care for you. And I believe that um, we have shared. I've been a little stronger in my uh, sharing tonight. It wasn't the direction I wanted to go in. But I wanted to to give you a little more knowledge about how it works. So I'm not, I promise you I'm not trying to give you propaganda. I'm trying to give you my knowledge in a short space of time. But it, it's for the people who already believe uh, in these teachings. So if you don't, you don't have to watch it. You don't have to accept it. You don't have to believe it. But I want to say I love you and I always say I love you to someone. Always say I love you. For love is the greatest gift and ability that anyone can have. Even if you don't have the intellect, even if you don't understand things, but you can love, you have the greatest ability. The greatest gift of all for God is love. I love you. <laughs> Please forgive me if I have offended you. I hope not. Be blessed. Thank you.